Hello, I don't even know how to start this interview today because the guy that I have here is huge. Nice to have you on the channel, sir. How are you today? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me on, Rod. Tell everybody who you are, a little bit of your background. Please. Sure, yeah. Well, I go by the name of English Teacher Tim on uh, TikTok, and that's where I primarily have my presence and have about uh, started about two months ago, have about 300,000 views on the channel, and uh, just am very excited about how excited people are to learn English out there. I mm -hmm. have a master's degree and currently working on my doctorate in teaching English as a second language. I've spent many years uh, overseas, mostly in Russia, uh, mm -hmm. teaching English uh, eight years there. Mm -hmm. So uh, I love helping adult learners, and that's where my specialization is. Mm -hmm. I, I know what it's like to be an adult language learner, so I really am passionate about helping adults reach mm -hmm. their language goals. I totally agree. When have you decided to be an English teacher? Well, that's a funny story. Uh, that was in 2007. And I had already spent many years as a software engineer mm -hmm. and uh, an information requirements analyst. So I was in the business world. And mm -hmm. I got to the point where uh, the money wasn't as important to me as what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to invest in people, not in systems. And so I made this big change and I have enjoyed it. And it's, it's been wonderful being a part of people's learning journeys. Um, and for me, that was the right life path. Do you prefer remote teaching as we call now or in-person teaching? Well, uh, most of the work I do is online teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I really loved my in-person clients. And when I was in Russia, that's what I had mostly. They would come to the mm -hmm. institute where I worked and they would, um, mm -hmm. uh, I would teach live classes. But then I also had many private clients that I worked with uh, personally. But mm -hmm. I think in today's world, uh, it's very realistic, not just because of COVID, but just because of where people are around the world and um, um, also just because of people's time. Uh, mm -hmm. Even for people in my area, it's better to meet online to save driving time and all of that. So I like the conveniences of, of, uh, of working online. Mm -hmm. I think it helped a lot of people, maybe who were on the edge, make the mm -hmm. jump into online learning and realize that, you know, it's really not that bad. And yeah. And for us teachers, we learn to use the tools better, uh, you know, and I think that really helps too. I, I have a whole library of information I work from and know how to quickly share screen and, and work with people on, um, you know, make on-screen annotations. Yeah. So it's a very, uh, uh, I think it's been a good thing, actually. I agree with you. What is a memory that you have as a teacher that you could share with us? Oh, man, there are so many. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're wonderful moments. Some of the most meaningful, I think, were, were actually when I was in Russia. Uh, I, uh, I, we had a relationship with a, a, an orphanage near our home. Mm -hmm. And we would go on the weekends. And the children took English classes as part of their school. Mm -hmm. But they didn't really have a lot of good instruction. Um, so I would help students with their homework. And then uh, some of the more interested ones wanted to move their English skills forward. So mm -hmm. sitting with those students and uh, my wife and I would go and we would sit with those students and teach and play English games with them. And it was so much fun uh, just helping these young minds develop their skills. Uh, I say that even though I normally uh, prefer working with adults, those are particularly memorable moments mm -hmm. for me. It's priceless, right? In your opinion, which is the best way to learn English today? Mm. You know, in my doctoral program, I am I deeply study uh, second language acquisition. Um, mm -hmm. So I would echo the words of Michael Long, who mm -hmm. is the father of task-based language teaching and the interaction hypothesis. Mm -hmm. I would say that if you only had one way to learn a language, natural conversation would be it. 
Uh, that's not to say that other instruction about the language is good. I think mm. it is good and helpful to learn grammar, and uh, but it's not helpful in the way we often think it's helpful. Mm -hmm. You can't just learn grammar and now you know the formula and now you'll use it properly. No, mm -hmm. uh, the best thing to do is to find uh, tutors who will speak with you and who know how to correct your mistakes yes. and know how to give you instruction then on the specific things you are struggling with. I think that is better than doing yet another course in grammar, which mm -hmm. so many of our students have had, but, you know, for mm -hmm. speaking ability, mm -hmm. uh, it's really best to be involved yeah. in natural conversation with somebody who knows how to correct your mm -hmm. mistakes and remind you of them too. So yeah. what is your opinion about no native English teachers? <laughs> Well, um, so I know that like for a lot of people, the gold standard is speaking with a native English speaker, yeah. but I don't, I don't think that that's always helpful. I think you have to be very, very careful of, of, of that. Mm -hmm. uh, we found in the programs that I was leading overseas that <laughs> very often it was the non-native English speaking teachers who had mm -hmm. learned English mm -hmm. who were better at teaching it because mm -hmm. they had gone through the process of learning it themselves so they could mm -hmm. explain uh, more about concepts than mm -hmm. the native en English speaker could, who just sort of knew them naturally, mm -hmm. but had less ability to explain them. Mm -hmm. um, English is, you know, English acquisition, as long as you're studying with somebody whose level is above yours, you mm -hmm. will learn. So, um, and, and this surprises people too, uh, but I, and especially students, sometimes they don't want to get in groups, breakout groups and speak with each other because they say, well, we all make mistakes. So how do we know? No. Yeah. Just using the language, you will improve. And mm -hmm. all of you make different kinds of mistakes mm -hmm. and you can all point things out to each other. So the person you're speaking with does mm -hmm. not have to be a native speaker per se mm -hmm. uh, to, to really help your language skills improve. Yeah. What is the advice you would give uh, my audience to keep motivated to study English? Okay. So as an adult, I became fluent in Russian. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, you know, I'm embarrassed to say my age, but I was 40 years old when I began studying uh, wow. Russian. So, and within two years, I was operable in a work environment. Mm -hmm. uh, not perfect, mm -hmm. but, but fluent. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the, the question is, you know, how does one achieve that? Mm -hmm. uh, I did study very hard every day. I will admit I had, uh, I was taking about six to eight hours a week of, mm -hmm. of, of, of individual lessons. That's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the thing that really rocketed it for me was I learned to enjoy doing things in Russian every day. Yeah. I would watch TV shows, watch movies, take notes on words that I, I, I didn't know. I read mm -hmm. tons of books. Guys, you cannot rely on your time with your tutor once or twice per week or however many times it is to teach you the language. Mm -hmm. You are like an athlete. You have to be training every day. The teacher is like your coach. Uh, he, he or she is, is, is guiding you in your training. But mm -hmm. you need to do something in English every day. But the good mm -hmm. news is it can be something fun. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with it being fun for you. Uh, mm -hmm. As long as it's in English and as long as you're enjoying it, do a little bit each day and you're going to find that your skills will really improve. Yes. Awesome. What is the future of English learning for you? Wow. That's a really good question. Um, you know, a lot of people think it's an apps. I'm not a hundred percent convinced of the usefulness of apps. I think that, um, I think that human interaction is required to really learn to speak a language. Mm -hmm. Apps can help, but you still need human interaction. Mm -hmm. What I'm seeing is a lot of, there are apps that focus on um, getting people together in communities to speak. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the future of effective language learning. Mm -hmm. um, guided time with a tutor, but then also in um, uh, meetups online and around the world yeah. where you're doing language exchange with people. Yeah. I yeah. think that that may be more the future of effective language, uh, language learning. If you allow me to put my two cents in, 
Sure. I um, I created a channel this way because I wanted to bring teachers, students, accents, natives, you know. So, the, and I like to tell people stories, as I told you. And mm -hmm. I think it works because you don't get used to the same accent every week. You know, you have an American one week, you have a British another week, you have oh, yeah. an Irish, so you go. And they're not only teachers, they are students, they are friends, they are personal friends, you know. So I think that's fun because, like, you can listen to, to the accent of a German person during an interview, of a Scottish person in another. So I think that's right. great. And, and that's a super important thing for us to remember. Like, mm -hmm. so I'm also learning uh, while well, I'm brushing up on my modern Greek, mm -hmm. but th there aren't very many variations of that because it's a relatively small country. Mm -hmm. But look, English is all over the world. And as it grows and develops in different mm -hmm. areas, it mm -hmm. takes on a life of its own. The kind mm -hmm. of English that's spoken in India is not bad English. Yeah. It's different English. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's its own dialect. Yeah. And if you're going to be a a global person, you need to be able to listen to different yeah. dialects of yeah. spoken English and understand yeah. them. I'm, I fully agree with that. Yes. Teachers should always be perfect. Oh, yeah. Uh, perfectly um, earnest, but no, that's, that's of course, uh, not true. Teachers are not perfect. And yeah. that's something important for students to know. Just because a teacher doesn't maybe understand, mm -hmm. um, or, you know, you, sometimes you can hit teachers with something that, wow, uh, you know, that stumps them and, and they have to do a little bit of research. As mm -hmm. long as your teacher is willing to do that research and come back mm -hmm. to you and help you through it, um, you know, n there is no one teacher that knows everything there is to know about the English mm -hmm. language. Yeah. And so much is changing and some of it's very difficult to explain. Mm -hmm. uh, because grammar just happens in a community of people as it's mm -hmm. being used and it's constantly in flux. And so, uh, yeah, don't expect your teacher to be 100 and be careful of yeah. teachers yeah. who say, you know, this is a hundred percent, you know, perfect. Or I know a hundred percent. There are all sorts of variations in English. Now we go to the rapid round game that everybody loves. Sure. Go for My it. My family is. Oh, my family is amazing. <laughs> Teaching is uh, inspiring. The most beautiful word in English for me is resilient. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. To dream or to be realistic all the time? All the time. There's a spectrum there, but I will lean toward the dream. <laughs> awesome. The mountains or the beach? The beach. It's in my yes. blood. Yes. By saying that you like the word resilient, I am resilient when? Uh, I am resilient when I don't let my problems get me down. Mm -hmm. my next station will be uh, large scale teaching mm -hmm. influence and the last one from me describe yourself in one word earnest awesome yep. now yep. I'm on the hot seat and you can ah. take your vengeance <laughs> awesome awesome <laughs> okay all right well, I like some of these, so I'm going to use them. My family okay. is? My foundation. Wonderful. My inspiration is? In teaching. My inspiration in teaching is? Um, I'll tell you a quick story. Some people say they want to be successful. I say that I want to be important. Because the word important, you know it as much as I do, means that somebody imported something from you. So when somebody learns something from you, they are importing your knowledge. And there's nothing more important than knowledge. It avoids limitation and it helps you to know that the more you learn, the less 
you know. Mm -hmm. Because you have to learn more down the line. That's my answer to your question. Wonderful. Person I respect. R-E-S-P-E-C-T for everybody. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Uh, great book. A great book. Well, the last one I, I read was The Hate You Give. And I think oh, it's okay. awesome. It's a good thing to spread this message to the world right now. Okay. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, country I'd love to visit. I would like to go to uh, England because I didn't have the chance. I love the States. I've been there many times, but I would love to go to England soon. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, treasured possession. The ability of teaching, mm -hmm. the love for English, and my children. My family, actually. My wife, my children. These are my treasured possessions. All right. I'll give you one more. Okay. Best advice for an English learner. English is consistency, passion, and devotion. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, I think any language learning is. Any language that you want to learn, take these three words, embed them, and go. Yep. You know? Very good. Very good. Wonderful. For every guest, I have a sentence, a quote, a takeaway. Mm -hmm. And for you, sir, is nobody does anything alone. I would be talking to you for two hours, three hours, four hours, because you are one of the best conversationalists that I've ever met. Oh, thank you. And I, and I love you. listening to your stories. And it was a wonderful interview. I see your videos on TikTok. Keep them coming. And I will. as my students say now, keep trucking. Keep trucking. <laughs> Thank you so much for the interview. It was amazing. Thank you for taking part of your time to talk to a Brazilian teacher who lives in the forgotten corners of the world. Oh. And have I'd love to get down there. I have several students in Brazil, and I, yeah. I, uh, I would love to get down there yeah. and, and experience life. When there. you come down, let me know. All right. All right, Rod. Um, I definitely will. It will be a pleasure if we have the chance to meet. This was Mr. Tim. You will find his links in the description down below. Be sure to check him out. All right. Thank you, sir. Once again, it was yes. Thank you, Rod. Wonderful. See you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. See you. Peace. Hello, it's Rod's friend here, Gino from Real Everyday English. Sorry for interrupting your video. I just want to make a quick recommendation that you subscribe to Rodrigo's channel. He's an amazing guy. He's so humble. He's so dedicated and he creates absolutely fantastic content. See you people soon. Bye-bye. God bless.